I'm Karen Stevens, the EA Sports Accessibility Lead. My job is, is basically trying to help those with disabilities be able to play EA games. This talk is about AAA gaming while blind. So basically, how blind gamers are playing EA's major titles. A little backstory. Madden 17 had accessibility features covered in a talk I gave last year. And it covered things like enlarged on-field graphics, which made things twice as big, uh, twice as wide, twice as tall, on the field, so people with low vision were able to see it. At the same time, I also um, added in brightness and contrast support, also for people with low vision. So I wanted to get information back from our gamers as to how they, what they thought of these features. And so I created an email account and a Twitter address just so I could get feedback back from our gamers. And uh, I, the feedback I got surprised me. I'm blind, I was able to play past versions of Madden, but changes were made to things like the kick meter, so now it's hard to play, I can't kick the ball. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, and also the fact that I didn't realize that we had that many blind gamers. So I went, I, I reached out, and I'm like, you know, thank you for this information. Um, is anybody else here? Because I found it audio. I found it on AudioGames.net, which is a site for uh, gamers who are blind, and they they make audio games for each other. So I went there, and I'm like, oh, does anybody else playing any EA games that I should know about? Yeah, <laughs> I'm blind, and I can play UFC, but I'm having trouble with submission mechanics. Like basically, end up on the ground, and they don't know exactly what's going on. I'm blind, and I can play NHL, but I have trouble knowing when the puck is about to hit the ice meaning that they have a really hard time getting control of the puck when you first start playing. Or, I'm blind and I'm playing Need for Speed. And sometimes I go off the map and get lost. That blew my mind that they were playing Need for Speed. So here's the important thing in all of this. I can play. They're already playing. We already had an audience. They were just struggling. So that was important to realize that we were ignoring part of our audience. And Really, everyone should be included. So how is this even possible? I started asking them questions. Can you explain to me how you're able to play these games? I don't understand. 3D sound design. The more realistic the sound is, the better chance they have uh, of understanding. Turns out there's a grain of truth behind Daredevil, the, the comic book character, where they can, people can use echoes to determine how far away walls are. I had no idea that that was possible. But no, they really can. And uh, so when you start putting them in an environment with 3D sounds all around them, like for the person with Need for Speed, he was listening for cars. You know, you wouldn't think of that, but it turns out that that's super important to have real 3D sounds. Uh, reaction indications. So let's say you're on a menu and you hear click, click, click. That's important, so you know, they know where in the menu they are. It's also important when you're like in a fighting game, you can actually hear a sound when the hit connects, so you get more information. Menu wrapping. So menu wrapping is, is when you have like a carousel. So you have a bunch of options, and when you get to the end of the list, it automatically goes back to the beginning. If you don't have an indication as to when this wrap happened, they have no idea where they are on the list. They have no idea when they get back to the beginning. So there's two options. One, don't wrap. Two, add in some sort of feedback. Rumble audio doesn't matter, so they know that that happened. Haptic feedback, haptic feedback is rumbles. It gives you extra clues and context as to what's going on. It can be used in place of audio in many cases, and it helps give weight to different interactions in the game. Deterministic menus. Randomness is, is indeed confusing for everyone. Uh, in this case, it means that like, when you're in a menu, you might have uh, ads that may or may not show up. You may have special promotion modes that may or may not show up, which means that your menu will be different sizes, things may be in different locations, and if you can't see, that's a problem. Now you may be wondering, okay, so how are they even coping with what they have already? Well, there is some technology out there that lets them take things like stream video off their console into a PC, and then it uses optical character recognition to read the menus. They still have trouble telling where they are, but they can actually read some of the information. Um, but it's not a complete thing. They uh, are still lacking as to what they're exactly highlighting. They, they may not be able to tell. 
Uh, sometimes they use the um, OCR technology, so they hold, they hold up a phone to the screen and it does the same thing as that streaming device, but then you have to have a separate step. But they are actually able to read some of the menus even if we didn't do anything in the game itself. So that's important to realize. It also means that the menus is as important as it is, and really it is important to make it so somebody can read them, someone blind can follow them without using software. If you make all your menus navigatable but you can't play the game, that's not gonna help. So Madden NFL, how on earth are they doing this? This is one of the games I got contacted about first. And it was about somebody who was really frustrated with the new kick meter. And I asked him, okay, so I know you're frustrated with this, but what does work for you? How, how are you playing this? Commentary. So Madden, among with most of our other sports titles, have commentary in it, meaning that there is a constant dialogue of everything that's going on. It's kind of like listening to a game on the radio where it gives you a bunch of extra information. It gives them enough information where they know where their opponents are, they know like what yard line they are on the field, and they know how many more chances they have to get to the next down, which is like 10 yards from the previous yard line. Um, and they know what their team members are doing, and they have, they have some general idea of what's going on just from that. It also gives them information on the score. Now, another thing that made it easier for them in Madden is that the goal was always to move up. The goal you're going towards is always up if you're you, you know, using a stick. The AI, since there are so many different players on the field, the AI auto steers for everyone other than the player you're currently controlling. You can choose not to take control of a player, meaning it will run for you. There are also assists, so you can do little dodge moves and things, and you don't need to worry about um, when to do this. So, the, but the fact is that you always can move up. That was probably the most valuable thing because that means they could take over if they wanted to. And if a car, someone's coming close to them, they can feel that because there's haptics when someone's coming about to tackle you and they can you know, swirl away. You can watch somebody playing these games and you may not even realize they're blind unless they try to kick the ball. That was a different story. Need for speed. So this is a racing game, it's kind of open world. The plus side is that if you go off the track, usually it'll move you right back on the track, like the game itself will move you back on the track, so that helps them a lot. Um, realistic sound design. Sound design matters, it matters so much. It tells you whether or not you're on dirt, you're on pavement, or what type of surface you're on. You can hear the obstacles going by. So they know that like, if I hear three whooshes, I just went past three posts, that type of thing. So it gives them enough information in addition to being able to hear the cars. I ask them, how do you know when to turn? Well, the other cars are turning, I turn with them. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I never thought of that before. Engine pitch helps determine speed. The engine sounds different depending how fast you're going and how much you're accelerating. And they use that in conjunction with the other information to essentially memorize tracks the same way sighted people do. And then after that, they just go spinning around you know, by themselves. And you're like, how is this person doing this? Well, it's because they used the other cars and figured out the track and figured out all these whooshing sounds and everything. And they've essentially memorized the tracks, even if they're not intending to. Controller rumbles were extremely useful if you get more feedback. It lets them know whether or not they've hit something. It also lets them know what type of ground they're on. It's, it gives you more information than just audio alone. NHL. NHL is another sports title, meaning it also has detailed audio, such as commentaries. And similar to Madden, it's a constant dialogue of everything that's happening. In addition to that, you can hear the other players, you can tell when there's a puck being hit, and uh, it also has a feature where you can set the camera to be a fixed angle. So, similar to Madden, your goal is to go up and this helps them know where they are. Now, the question becomes, okay, that's great, but how do they know when to shoot? Well, it turns out there's assistive aiming in the game you can turn on, and it helps you aim your shots. So as long as they know that they're relatively close to the end of the field, they can try taking a shot. It's not as good as an experience as someone with sight, but it is an experience. And having an experience is the most important thing. For UFC, 
The com they have a commentary as well, just like the other sports titles. And it gives you more information as to what the other player is doing. What blew my mind is the, the person who contacted me about this game. He's like, yeah, I, be I beat the UFC 2 championship. I'm like, you what? Yeah, I beat the whole thing. OK, for putting this in context, I think it took me eight hours to beat the first round in that game. And they finished the championship. I'm like, can you give me tips? <laughs> I can't play this game. So it just shows you that. And I asked him, how did he do this? He spent months trying to figure it out, where he's like, well, there's certain audio things that happen after, after certain rumble things that happen. And then I know if I do the following, then it works. And he got to the point where he was able then to explain to other blind gamers and teach them how to play the game. So we had a, a reasonably sized blind gaming community for UFC 2. So the trial and error really helped, but that's still rather painful. Um, we like to give them more information. So support and improvements. Soliciting feedback is important, very important. One thing I don't have in this slide but do have later, but I will say now, audiogames.net, all one word, is a blind community. And they play games, and they have a forum, and that's one of the top ways I've gotten information is by working on their forum. And if you go there and look for me, you'll find the entire conversation of all of this, including all the um, questions of what games are you playing and how are you doing this? It's all there. So, but soliciting feedback is key because our titles do release, many of them yearly or bi yearly or relatively often. So it gives us opportunities to add more information every single time. Now, unfortunately, because this, these games all have a long history, we're not able to necessarily do it from scratch. The time really you should be thinking about this is when you're first starting the game. It's when you're first starting your design. It's cheaper to do it early than it is to do it late. That does not mean there isn't value in doing it late. So with the R games, sometimes we do it in patches. That's OK. And keep in mind, it's not about a competitive gaming experience. This is about people playing with friends, playing with their parents, children. I've gotten emails from like a blind parent in the UK who wanted a game he could play with his five-year-old son. And he was able to play Madam. That's the type of thing we're going for. Yes, it would be wonderful if they could have the same experience as a competitive gamer, but it'd be wonderful if they just had an experience. And really, that's the most important thing. So Madden NFL 18. We did add new features to Madden NFL for specifically these problems. What you see here is a picture I used when pitching this to the executives as to how we're going to fix the game or how we could fix the game. The white boxes represent the areas I added rumble. So we have this little line that starts at the bottom. It goes sliding up to the top, and then it comes back down again. The, when it goes up to the top, that's when you determine your power and when you, uh, the, how hard you kick. And when it comes back down, you try to line up those, the, the arrows. And that determines how accurately you kick. Now, you can see how this could be a problem if you can't see that thing. <laughs> so, and it had no audio cues. So, I went through and uh, said, okay, well, if we have these different zones and we added a rumble to these, um, I think we can get past this point. And at the same time, also added in extra rumbles. So, like, you don't have to memorize the advanced menus. As long as you snap the ball, if you feel like a short single rumble, you know you're in the middle of a pass. If you have a long rumble, you know it's a run play. If it's a double rumble, you're looking at a kick meter. And then you can expect the two rumbles after that point. So from that, they don't have to memorize the, main, the long menus. They can, some of them still have, because they like being able to pick their exact play, but they don't have to. And that really lowered the barrier to people who are trying to learn the game for the first time. Keep in mind the people playing this game have never, literally never seen football, because they're completely blind, but they've also often not even heard football. <laughs> so that made it interesting. When I also have extra rumbles when the ball is in the air, and also when the snap occurs. So basically, any time the ball leaves somebody's hands, you feel it, you know it's happening. Now, if you're wondering, why do I keep doing rumbles? Why am I not doing audio? I'm deaf. <laughs> So I'm the one who implemented these features myself. And I, 
I, they, I, they kept talking about it in terms of audio, and I'm like, okay, I know in order to make this happen, it's probably going to be me doing it. I need to be able to test this. There is no way I'm gonna be able to test audio. <laughs> so I thought about it, and I'm like, okay, how about deafblind features? How do we make this so we can make it so the deafblind can play? So I added rumbles to everything. And I did turn off my monitor, and I was still able to get touchdowns. And I got points and scores in the game, and I could figure out where I was based on patterns. Like, if it's two kick meters in a row, I know I just punted the ball. And now I'm doing kickoff. So I know that now the other team has control. I'm going to say it's really hard to play deaf blind. It is possible, but it's very difficult. Um, I would have to write an extensive guide if someone was wanting to play deaf blind, but I wouldn't mind doing that if somebody's interested. So on top of that, once I proved the game could be played, I literally blindfolded the gameplay team. I got those Eclipse glasses you can't see anything through, and I had them all wear these really cool nifty looking sunglasses that completely blinded them and made them play the game. And they were able to play. And they were like, wow, this actually works. Yeah, it works pretty well. And from there, we got past the, there is no way a blind person can play Madden. Yes, a blind person can play Madden, and they can now have done it too. At that point, I've had more leverage, so I went to the story mode team, because last year was the first year Madden had a campaign, and said, hey, so blind players can already play the game. Can we make it so they can play through the campaign? What would be the blockers for them? They're like, well, we have these quick time events, and we don't know we, can't, we have no information of giving back to them. I'm like, okay, can we make a guide? That would help. So I got all the information from them to make this guide. And at the same time, I'm like, okay, so some things we're not gonna be able to figure out because of positioning, it's gonna be hard. They might be able to do it. We need to make sure they're not stuck. So if they fail a few times in a row, they fail forward. It does change the dialogue in the game if you do fail forward but it doesn't have an overall impact in the experience and you are able to finish the story. And that's really the most important thing, is having an experience. And blind gamers have actually gotten to the very end of Madden Story Mode. UFC's new feature. UFC also got haptic feedback. This was done completely independently of me at first. There was a blind gamer who reached out on Twitter to one of the uh, devs, and then it came back to me that there, someone was doing that, and I was already the EA accessibility lead, so I was just following up to make sure everything was okay and anybody, no one needed anything. And this, the other dev had already started adding in rumbles, so you could tell how far or, or near you were with your opponent. So basically, if the right motor rumbles, your opponent's throwing a high strike. If it's the left motor, it's a low strike. Tensity tells you how far away you are from the other player and gives you a lot more information as to what's going on. Now, he did this, the reason he did rumble, which is really a good reason why I would have done it too, even if I could actually hear, I would, um, if there's no cost of making an audio file or loading the audio file, there's no performance overhead of an audio file. Rumble's cheap. So the fact it's cheap made it a really good option. Now from there, I made an accessibility portal. This just came out last week. This is brand new. I, before this point, all the guides I was saying I was writing were all on Reddit because I had no home for them. So I put everything on Reddit even though they didn't have any hyperlinks and to put it in perspective, the guide for Madden that for the blind is currently over 25 pages printed long. So that's an awful lot to not have any hyperlinks on, but you do what you can. And so, for example, for the, what the guide might look like, this is a screen cap of the guide. That's why the points are a different color, is that this is literally the web page, or piece of it. It tells you, this is the manual itself, and all the manuals are text-based, per game that's on the site, and it tells you with no pictures exactly what each button is and what it does. So you can use that then to communicate back. Avoid tables. If you nest tables incorrectly or try to do variable lengths, it can mess up screen readers. Avoid tables. This is why we have the colons in the format here. It is possible to make a table that works well with screen readers. It's also very easy to make a mistake. So until you got that down, avoid tables. 
Also make sure you turn on Windows Narrator or VoiceOver if you're using Apple, because if you do that, you can hear what your web page sounds like, and you can find out what you have to do to make it sound the way you want it to. So it's important to test. This is an example of the text-only guide for Madden. And explains the base concept of football, because keep in mind, some of these people have no clue what football is. So I remember I had a meeting where, with um, another member of our team who is, we have these employee resource groups. Uh, I run the accessibility one. She runs the one for uh, women. She's like, do you have any idea how hard it is to explain football to women? I said, I don't know. Do you have any idea how hard it is to explain football to somebody who's blind? <laughs> She's like, good point. <laughs> So, but I do give a brief overview of what football is, how the teams line up, what, what the different, how to score points and things like that. Just a high level overview so they have some concept of the game. It also gives detailed information on like how to create an origin account, how to sign in for the first time, what the setting menus are when you first go through the game, and what options are recommended for them. It also provides information on how to reset all options so if they make a mistake, because Madden still does have some of those revolving menus that are a problem, how to reset it so they know where they are and then go from there. Tedious, but at least it gets past that. We have, uh, like I said earlier, the long shot story mode. We have an extremely detailed list of every single thing that happens in long shot, which I find hilarious because this has been out since the day that um, the patch came live. And it, it also gives information for, uh, like, there's this mode where you have to know all this football knowledge and pick the right things. The answers are in the guide, but nobody's ever noticed. <laughs> so, but um, it gives you extremely de detailed information, so somebody who has no sight at all still has a decent chance of playing, and that's really what matters. Um, and by this point, you can find those answers anywhere on the web, so that's no real secret, because that happened last summer. So it gives a key-by-key key format, as I showed earlier, where um, it covers every single step. Now, this is also a screen cap from that website, where you see that's why it's blue, because that's the color of the links and, and the, button, the uh, points in uh, the website. So as you see here, on the left stick, press right four times, then down two times to reach the practice icon. Press A to enter practice icon, the next menu has three options, normal, offense only, and kickoff. For now, let's practice kicking. Press down twice and then A. The whole guide reads like that. <laughs> so if you can't see it all and you're having trouble with your screen reader, you can still get through and it gives you an idea of what options are there. For UFC3, when I went through and did the same exercise, the, it's a little more con condensed because it shows the way the menu's laid out so there's less of the individual buttons. We do have scenarios. Basically, these are use cases. We still have use cases for certain things, but it's a little less uh, saying button by button than Madden's is. Now, I would happily expand it if I am requested to. Every single section in Madden's guide is because it was specifically requested by someone. And anytime anyone asked me how to do anything, I made a new section. By the time I was done, I had a 25 pages of guides. So this is an ongoing effort. Um, and the basic rule I'm pushing, you never can regress, you can always go forward. So if you have something that's accessible already, you must maintain the accessibility. If you touch a new, something that you haven't touched in a while, because a lot of these games, we do touch uh, UI year from year and things like that, but the game itself, Madden's massive, so some features stay relatively the same for years at a time. When you touch something, you must make it better, not worse. Worse is not allowed. And if we keep doing that, eventually the whole game becomes much, much more accessible, and it's already started happening. Low-hanging fruit can quickly unblock large portions of your audience. Yeah, being able to kick the ball is really important in football. So um, just fixing that helped so many people and really increased uh, the number of blind gamers we have playing. Ask your audience for its pain points. That's probably the most important point here. Ask your audience. They know what they need. They may be playing your games. By asking them, 
you can find out what they really need. Now, keep in mind that they, sometimes it's easier to make sure you stay in problem space, not solution space. You probably all heard that before, where to make sure you're solving the right problem, because sometimes they'll jump into a solution, and really you have to figure out what the core of the problem is. But that's a standard design issue. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. So once again, audiogames.net is a great place to meet blind gamers. I highly recommend it. And you can see all the conversations I had with them and all the research that went into this presentation is all available there. So you can get all that information if you like. Um, additional content for what these guides look like and different descriptions of how you can design your website for blind gamers, go to ei.com able. The whole site is designed for blind navigation and blind gaming. The whole site uses alt tags on everything so it gives you extra information as to what the pictures are. And every single widget you can reach every part of. If you need to contact me, uh, my Twitter is EA underscore accessible. I do tweet out every time something new happens in the accessibility area. So if you just want to keep up with news, that's a good way of doing it. Uh, if, I, if you have any questions or feedback, able at ea.com is a great way to reach me. And does anyone have any questions? Yeah. First of all, she's going to be repeating the questions yeah. to me because I lip read. <laughs> okay. Um, as I told you uh, before, I'm I come from the mobile industry, and EA does mobile games, and um, all, all the games that you said, like have, part of them have uh, games on mobile. Uh, do you address, you know, accessibility in any way on mobile? Let's repeat that. Do you address any of like these kind of things on mobile games? Yes, these type of things do happen on mobile games. I'm actually going to be re looking at our mobile games shortly. I started with the console games simply because I had to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, I've, only been, I've actually only been the accessibility lead for six months. My positions only existed that long. Before that point, I was a Madden game developer, which is why I was able to say, please, please, please let me put this feature in, because I was already on the game. Um, but yes, no, that's very important. Um, there are lots, you're welcome to follow me and ask me for information. I can give you more information that's mobile specific and talks about gestures and things. All right, fantastic, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you half answered my question about uh, only being in the position for six months, but um, I was wondering what other resources you have in EA accessibility. So do you have any QA testers that are disabled with uh, blindness, deafness, color blindness, things like this, or are there plans for this? I think I partially caught that question, so let me try to repeat. Um, the question being, is it, do we have anybody who's disabled who's helping test or develop these? The answer is yes. Uh, I have a list of, of developers I made um, internally that I, I ask people to self-identify if they have any issues. So I have a list of everyone who's colorblind in the building that was willing to do that. And it happened to cover every single type of colorblindness, even blue, which is like super duper rare. I got really lucky. So that gave me a really good background at any of this. So that helped a lot. We have multiple people with macular degeneration in the building, which causes a form of low vision. And they help too with these. So if we have something where I'm like, I don't think so-and-so can see this. Well, instead of me saying that, I go, hey, can you see this? And then I send that feedback back to the designer. Oh, another thing that I do, and I don't know if I took them out here, is that I have low vision goggles I use to better get people to better understand what it means to be accessible. So I uh, postulated to your management that, would you say that if you're not legally blind, you should be able to play our games? And the answer was yes. I'm like, cool. All right, put these on. This is borderline legal blindness. If you're wearing these, you should still be able to play the game. I don't care how close to the screen you are. And uh, that helped a great deal. Now, this is not a perfect solution. Same thing with, uh, with blindfolding our game developers. We don't have a lot of completely blind people to leverage. That is true. We do have people who are playing our game who are totally blind. And I did have blind gamers come in and demo things with the team. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that um, adding some of these accessibility features to help 
blind people has also generally helped because a lot of those haptic feedback things you talk about actually seem like they would be generally useful and generally helpful for just kind of feeling how the game works for anyone. Maybe that. Have you found that the, these, um, these new features for uh, disabled people have helped just in general with gameplay? You have to repeat that again. I, like, have you found that these uh, new, like, in, um, inputs have helped just in general, like, play? Yes, the, these things have helped in general gameplay, not just um, the, uh, the intended target audience. For example, it turns out I found out that deaf gamers were turning on the haptics because it made them feel like they had more information than that they would get from audio. So I wasn't intending that, although that makes sense because I'm deaf and I'm the one who made the thing in the first place. You'd think that would cross my mind, but yes, no, the deaf, the deaf are using it too. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, uh, so it, you mentioned you have specific rules for new features and stuff like that. Uh, is accessibility part of the official like pipeline and gating process? Is accessibility a part of the official pipeline in the gating process? Is the accessibility part of the official pipeline in the game process? G g gating. Yes, for EA Sports. So the way my role works is I'm handling, taking in feedback and distributing among teams, giving, exam like giving examples of how things should be fixed to all of EA. Now for sports, I'm more proactive and I actually go out to the game teams, even if it means flying across the country, and I have them you know, think about things at the design phase, so it's planned through. Uh, that's different, though, for the sports versus not sports at this time. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Um, just my first question is, are the game um, uh, designed to be played alone or to be played with other people, sometimes uh, well-sighted? Are the games designed to be played alone or with other people? They're designed to, the games are, are the games designed to be played alone or with other people? They're designed for both. So the, the instructions, for example, of Madden covers online play as well, not just offline play. Yeah, but online player is you're alone on your own. You can play locally with somebody or you can play online with somebody. And when you play locally with someone, uh, is it disturbing for the other player? Could you repeat that? If you play um, online with someone, is it disturbing for the other player or distracting, I guess? Um, when you turn on those extra haptic feedback, it only affects the person who signed into that controller. So you can have it turned on, and the person next to you may not have it turned on. Okay. So it's what optional. Think, what about the audio? If it's an audio type of thing, it would be on for everybody or off from anybody because it comes out of the TV. Okay, yeah. But, but if you're playing online, yeah. the person, one console could have it on, the other console could have it off. That's how colorblindness works, for example, for Madden. Okay, and I have a second question, still about playing with sighted people. Um, you say the most important thing is to have an, e an experience, not to have the best experience. But doesn't it? It feels like um, you designed um, less well-designed game. Actually, you you shorter the experience, you make it um, a minor experience for the impaired people. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm sorry for my English. It's uh, sometimes terrible. Um, it just, um, I'm a researcher working on auditory display and working on um, audio in video game for um, impaired people. And um, my question now is, can we design uh, equivalent experience for both sighted and um, blind people? Was the question, can you design an experience that will work for both sighted and non-sighted? Yeah, what, yes. but in an equivalence. That's the whole point, is that yeah. so you could have a AAA game that you could have somebody play with their friend who's not blind. And people with Madden, especially at this point, are doing that. Yeah, but is, is there experience it's, equivalent? OK, so equivalent in terms of can you have an experience? Yes. Okay. Is it a competitive gaming experience? At this moment, no. Okay. Just because it says this moment now does not mean that will never be true, nor does it mean that will ever happen. Um, yeah, it's, sure. But in terms of, is it theoretically possible to design something that works equally well with someone who's blind and someone who's not blind? I believe it is. In terms of fun or in terms of performance? What did she say? In terms of, oh, sorry. Oh, fun or performances? In terms of fun or of preference? What did she say? Well, it, uh, options are always a good thing. I would always advocate for any sort of accessibility feature you have to make it optional. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Hmm? We, we have to wrap up. Okay. Because, uh, Thank you. That's okay. You can too. Uh, uh, everyone who's left, we can go to the wrap up room and finish up, and you're welcome to ask questions there. Thank you. <laughs>